Life and the Museum of Moscow present Hello everyone! Today I'm going to tell you more about some interesting Moscow streets. We're going to take a stroll down Novinsky Boulevard. I believe it's the most interesting street in the Garden Ring. The boulevard's name comes from a monastery of the same name, which, however, ceased to exist in the 18th century. Later, the spot became popular with the locals, who would get together here for the so-called Novinsky festivities. And eventually, a boulevard was built here. It should be mentioned, though, that during Soviet times, Novinsky Boulevard was renamed Tchaikovsky Street, on account that the famous composer had lived nearby. This unusual structure with horizontal windows and pillars was built in one of the yards of Novinsky Boulevard in the 1920s. It's one of the most prominent examples of Moscow's architectural avant-garde. Avant-garde emerged some 100 years ago. As an architectural style, it's characterized by simple and effective shapes, lots of glazing, insulated rooms, and, of course, novel solutions that architects began to adopt at the time. This specific building has one unique element. I'm talking about the pillars. The idea behind this design was to allow residents of this structure, as well as residents of this entire residential area, to pass through this building into the garden that was supposed to be sited next to this building. Since the idea of liberating women from household chores was popular among the masses in the 1920s, a standalone canteen with a kitchen was designed specifically for this building, where the residents would be able to get ready-to-eat meals and have lunch together. Those who didn't feel like eating at the canteen could have the option of taking the food back to their apartments. Each apartment had a small recess with a burner where you could heat your food. The building was designed for employees of the People's Commissariat of Finances of the USSR. And the first residents to move in really were employees of the Commissariat. But then new tenants started moving in who had nothing to do with the Commissariat of Finances, including artist Alexander Necker, who went on to paint the landscapes around this structure. It's one of the first apartment blocks in Moscow to have a real penthouse. It was the People's Commissar of Finances who lived in that penthouse, while the floors below it housed apartments, including some two-level units. Those were experimental apartments, as the architect who designed this block believed that two-level apartments could ultimately help reduce the total floor area in this building. The semicircular balconies, a flat roof and wraparound glazing were designed to encourage the tenants to spend time together in the building. It featured lots of public spaces for people to kick back and relax together. Unfortunately, the late 1930s saw some major changes in the tenants. A lot of them got swept up in the purges. And by the mid-20th century, all the VIP tenants had moved to better accommodations, while the building became municipal property and soon fell into disrepair. It is currently being renovated and converted into luxury apartments. This structure is one of the oldest on the boulevard. It was built in the late 18th century, and in 1910 it was purchased by Fyodor Shalyapin, who had it rebuilt for his own needs and as his living quarters. The main building was where the landlords lived, while the outbuilding served as living quarters for the servants. The outbuilding was sometimes leased out. In the late 18th century, the facades of this building were done in classic style, but later on eclecticism caught on, a style that blended and mixed all the architectural styles that had ever existed in history. And the building's last owner, Fyodor Shalyapin, had it redone in this new, trendy style.
Please note these semicolons. These specific elements date back to the time of classicism, but in the late 19th century this decor was no longer seen as sufficient, and lots of other decorations were added during the period of eclecticism, which we can now see around the windows. Fyodor Shalyapin didn't live here long, from 1910 almost until the revolution. Subsequently, the building was turned into communal apartments, and since 1988 it has housed the museum that you can now attend. This building was constructed immediately after the Second World War, in the 1950s. The US Embassy then moved in. The facades are done in classic Stalinist style. It's all about creating an impression of power. The materials are extremely expensive, which was typical of the time. Stalinist architecture is characterized by monumental facades that were supposed to represent the power of the Soviet people. Today it's a restricted access property, as it still houses the U.S. Embassy. It's been here ever since the building was commissioned. And right next to it is this little classicist structure. That's the house where Alexander Griboyedov lived. It should be said, though, that it's been renovated multiple times since then, and in the 1970s it actually burned down. The structure you see there now is essentially a brand new one. The recreated stucco moldings on the facade are the only reminder of classicism. Today it's just an office block. Next to the 18th century examples, you can see some 20th century industrial structures. People call this type of building a Khrushchevka. However, this one is not your run-of-the-mill Khrushchevka. It's an experimental one. This apartment block was designed for young families and featured extra small units. And the experiment was that it was constructed from standard concrete panels, the exact kind of concrete panels that the famous open-book high-rises on Novi Arbat were built from. The panels were clad in these ceramic tiles. This was done to make the facades washable. And this elegant mansion appeared here in 1912. In reality, though, it wasn't a mansion, rather a tenement. It was owned by Count and philanthropist Sergei Sherbatov. His apartment was on the top floor, and his home museum was there too. And on the sides there were apartments to let. After the revolution, the building was used as a dormitory for the workers of Triogorny manufactory, and later it was converted into communal apartments. In Soviet times, the top floor housed the polyclinic of the Ministry of Defense. Today it's just an apartment building. It was designed over a hundred years ago. At the time, people were feeling nostalgic for the old Moscow with the state houses, so neoclassicism gained popularity in architecture. Neoclassicism essentially repeated all the key elements of classicism, such as pillars and simple but elegant decor. But by then, construction technologies had made some serious progress, so buildings were getting bigger. And so what we see here is a big multi-story structure. Novinsky Boulevard is one of the most interesting streets in the Garden Ring. A lot of celebrities have lived here, such as Fyodor Shalyapin, Pyotr Tchaikovsky, Karo Halabyan, and many others.
Check how many memorial plaques this building has got on it. And that is no coincidence, seeing how it's one of the most famous structures in the street and how it was built for architects and artists. It was built in the mid-20th century, and its tenants included famous architect Karo Halabyan and his wife Lyudmila Tselikovskaya. This building, too, features the monumental style typical of Stalinist architecture. Though this monumental style proved highly impractical, and almost immediately after the building was completed, these metal meshes were put up because the facades started falling apart. These meshes are not particularly effective at handling this task, though. Initially, these were two different buildings. One was built before the revolution and the other 100 years ago. But in 1949, these two buildings were combined into one, with the facades being expanded and remade. So even now, if you look closely, you will see the original two structures. Take a look at the windows under the balcony on the third floor. They are at slightly different levels. I mentioned how a lot of celebrities have lived in this street. This building is no exception. It was at one time home to Sergei Mikhalkov, the author of the famous Uncle Stiopa and Our Country's Anthems. We are now done with historic architecture. Let's now focus on modern architecture. The kind of concrete and glass structures you see over there have been going up along Novinsky Boulevard over the past several decades. Those two structures house a hotel and a shopping center. That's it. Stay home, take care of your loved ones, and go on virtual tours of Moscow.